Hello everyone, Mizrim here, bringing you today the last game between World Elite and Invasion Red. It is Game 3, part of the um, IG uh, Monthly Madness Asia Tournament. And last game we saw World Elite take the win pretty convincingly. It was almost like a one-sided stomp. Um, World Elite with a very strong pushing lineup, taking the towers, getting the gold, then turning their advantage into items, and uh, you know just pressuring the enemy constantly with an early mechanism and four arcane boots to just siege the uh, enemy towers. So let's jump into this game. World Elite starting with the Invoker, uh, the Invoker ban, which is not very surprising as uh, Invoker is considered one of these very strong hero. But it's followed by a uh, Rebic ban by Invasion. Now, Rebic ban is more like a targeted ban. We saw World Elite pick uh, Rebic twice in a row now, and they don't—they just don't want to deal with it anymore. Uh, last game, Rebic dealt dealt some very, um, you know, caused a lot of havoc by stealing the Panda ultimate. He would just stand around the Brulings until the the Panda came out, and he would steal the the ultimate instantly. So. We're going to have Queen of Pain and uh, Windrunner ban from the World Elite side. So those ban are not so common. Um, Windrunner is one of those heroes who is very, very often picked. Uh, in fact, she's, uh, I think she's in the 7th position uh, for June uh, in the top pick ban material. But uh, Windrunner, for example, has been picked 239 times and only banned 69 times. Whereas Lycan, which is in 2nd position, was picked only 30 times and banned 323 times. So, denying a grade of mobility here by uh, World Elite, and on the other side, Invasion, the last two bands are very common bands, Lycan and the Prophet. Chaos Knight, first picked by World Elite, this is not very surprising. We saw, um, you know, Asian teams really favoring the Chaos Knight. They really like this hero, very strong with this, uh, you know, 2 to 4 second stun at the level 4 of Chaos Bolt. Also, this uh, displacement skill that allows them to chase to screw up the enemy's positioning in that. Um, uh, reality Rift, and not last, his ultimate also you know creating illusion, dealing a lot of damage if they are not contained, if they are not actually taken care of, and he can push quite easily with this as well. So, <clears throat> Invasion Red going to go for uh, Shadow Shaman plus Lone Druid, and um, this very often means that it's going to be a pushing lineup. And um, Shadow Shaman basically level six. As soon as he hit level six, he has this uh, uh, mass Serp serpent wars that he can just drop down on the on the tower and uh, start pounding on the tower. On the other hand, we have Lone Druid, who is a very good late game hero if he gets the farm, but he can also early game contribute to the fight and with the, well, contribute to the pushing power with his bear. And Darkseer picked by World Elite. It was quite surprising not to see Invasion Red going for uh, you know, those kind of heroes like Darkseer going through the pool, Leshrac going through the pool. And um, instead it's going to be World Elite that's going to take these heroes. So um, Darkseer now picked by uh, World Elite and Earthshaker picked as well. So now Earthshaker is all, often quite a strange pick, but uh, we saw World Elite pick Earthshaker three times in a row now. He, Luo has been playing Earthshaker in Game 1, in Game 2, and he's probably going to play him in Game 3 as well. So, um, the Darkseer and the Earthshaker are very strong anti-push heroes that uh, can just, you know, church a, a long, for a long time. Especially when you're, you know, Darkseer may not be that powerful when they're pushing the outer towers. But once they have to go and try to get the, bar the barracks, the Darkseer is just making life a hell to just, uh, you know, push down these, this uh, last tower. Because you have to go on the high ground, and the only thing Darkseer has to do is to put down the illusion wall, the, the, his uh, wall of replica. And if ever you get just near the wall, he will just vacuum you in, and Earthshaker will just come in and then, uh, 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 you know, nickel slam. So let's see what the invasion red side is going to pick to answer this. So Shadow Shaman, not only he's a good push pusher. But, um, you know, I, I, I often say, you know, Shadow Shaman, okay, good for a pushing lineup, but uh, we have to keep in mind that Shadow Shaman also have very great disables in the team fight in the form of a Hex and of the Shackle. So, uh, Shadow Shaman here uh, also very good for controlling heroes like, uh, you know, the Chaos Knight, who can deal a lot of damage if not taken care of. So he can just, you know, Hex him away and just ignore this uh, threat for four seconds. And same, he can just you know sacrifice his own uh, uh, his own ability to move and attack by shackling the Chaos Knight. So both of them are, are locked up, and it's, the shackle is not here for the damage. Obviously, it's just for the disable. Sen King now pick for Invasion Red. So Sen King not adding a lot to the pushing power as per se. He can push down the the creeps very fast with his Caustic Finale, 
but uh, more likely he's picked because of his uh, very good stun, line stun, and that deals also very good damage. And also because of his ultimate, who, which uh, the ultimate of Sand King, the epicenter, which deals tremendous amount of A AOE damage. So they're looking for this, uh, you know, uh, team fight control as well in the form of the Sand King. So right now, Invasion Red looking for both the pushing power and the team fight power. Uh, you know, the, the Rasta Wars, of course, also very a very good tool in the team fights, especially if you can get your enemy to fight around the the wards and you know prevent them from running away. And um. You know the 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 prophet also the not the prophet sorry the lone druid also make it so it's not like a all in early push build because um, you do not only have early game pushing heroes or mid game pushing heroes the lone druid can actually uh, carry quite hard if he gets the item late game so we're really gonna ban the Chen he's there basically saying okay uh, we saw that uh, you have uh, some strong pushing power we're not gonna we're not gonna let you pick the Chen so. Chen, also one of these heroes who can add up a lot to the pushing power by not only uh, you know using the creeps that he um, he converted in the jungle, but the ultimate of Chen is basically having an early mechanism that is global. That means that you do not have to stand in uh, you know next to your allies to to use this. And um, we saw how strong it was to have this very early heal in the last game where World Elite basically got this very fast mechanism and they could ju just siege towers after towers. They were having four arcane boots and one mechanism and they would just sit and trade blows and just heal up and the enemies once uh, after a good, uh, good amount of uh, you know harassment going back and forth they would have to back away or they would have to fight under the tower without any mana. So AA banned from the invasion side, uh, invasion side so AA uh, very annoying. Uh, you know, they can he can defend the tower from pretty much anywhere using his global ults, and also uh, his debuff on the on the ultimate. If it lands, it prevents the heal for like 10 seconds. Any source of heal is gonna get denied. No solve, no mechanism, no nothing. So very annoying to push against a, a, an ancient apparition, especially if you're going to go for an early push. That probably means that you're going to go for early mechanism as well. So World Elite also banning the Enigma, also a very good pushing hero and a very good jungler. And Invasion Red banning at last the Venomancer. So A and Venomancer, actually two last bans of World Elite the last game because World Elite the last game, they went, see, it was them who went for the early push power. So they were banning the same exact hero at the uh, fourth and the fifth ban, which were AA and Venomancer. Venomancer very annoying with his wards to defend the tower. Brewmaster picked by World Elite now. Brewmaster, one of these heroes, very often picked when he first came out, but uh, now people have learned to play against the Brewmaster. So he's still going to be very annoying, especially in these team fights. Blink in, stomp, slowing everyone, dealing damage, and then popping up the ultimate. And these little Brulings can deal a lot of damage on their own. Plus, they have very good disables. The tornado on the uh, air Bruling lasts for something like 6 or 8 seconds. It's enormous. Leshrac finally picked by Invasion uh, Invasion side. So Leshrac, I'm surprised he made it so far into the pool without getting picked before. And Leshrac, uh, so first Leshrac, uh, Sand King, very good combo. But also Leshrac, very good with his... Um, a double edict to push down the towers and um, early game Lushrak is going to really dish out a lot of damage with his double edict and Lina picked by really so now Lina what we have to know is that she's going to be played as support here but um, uh, very often you usually see like a crystal maiden if you want to support or something like a shadow demon not like a Lina. Lina is, is pretty rarely picked but here it's not a bad choice because um, if Lina actually lands her nuke her Laguna Blade on the Shrek or the Shadow Shaman, she can take one of them out of the fight instantly, and that makes the fight 4 against 5. If the Shadow Shaman didn't uh, have the time to put down his wards, well, basically, it's it's a huge, uh, you know, um, it's a huge uh, uh, ultimate that isn't in the team fight. So 4v5 four, four instantly if the Lina actually managed to get a support hero. And Titan are going to get picked by Invasion Red as last. So Titan are also not really adding up to the push except for the Anchor Smash which can, which can push creeps very fast. But he's also here for the huge uh, you know, team fight ability, the, Rav the Ravage. So now, right now, the Invasion side have a really good uh, team fight uh, setup with the Titan ulting uh, you know, to open up, the Sand King following up with his epicenter and his stun, and Lefrak just running around with his ultimate uh, and uh, his basically all his spells, AOE spells, and Shadow Shaman also here with the 
uh, his ulti as well and his Aethershock, while the Lone Druid can farm up and get this Radiance, and once he has this Radiance, the Earthshaker and the Lina are going to be in a huge world of pain just by standing in the teamfight. So, let's go over the player very quickly. SSSS on the Lashrac, uh, FZFZ.MY on the uh, Tidehunter, we have Wuyan on the Lone Druid, probably going to go solo top as he always do, like in game 1, he was playing the Prophet. And Calvin Tan on the Shadow Shaman, and uh, Shen GG at last on the Sand King. On the other side we have Luo again on the Earthshaker, Chan on the Chaos Knight like last game, GG on the Brewmaster, IC on the Lina, and we have FNTY on the Darks here. So lanes are probably going to be... Um, so I was thinking maybe... No, Shadow Shaman is actually going to support route, so he's, he's not going to solo mid. And Tidehunter actually bought a lot of items, so he might be soloing middle. Lashrak and Sen King going bottom, and Wuyan actually going to solo top. On the other side, we have Chan probably to, uh, probably going to go on the middle lane, uh, like last time he did against the, the Death Prophet. GG going to solo top. And uh, Earthshaker and Lina are probably going to rotate between top and middle lane, where FNTY probably going for the bottom lane, yes, I guess, as a Darks here. And... Um, we see that the uh, invasion side actually hiding up in this little sh area here in the shop. So, uh, if you remember in game one, Sen King from World Elite actually did the same thing. He hi he hit here, and A came from behind and ganked the Nature Prophet at level one. Nature Prophet went down very quickly to the uh, Sen King stun plus Kofi combo. So they might be looking to do the same thing to the Darks here, but uh, looks like Darks here actually not going for the bottom lane, and uh, he's maybe going to do. Like Invasion Red did last time, in the last game, that means that basically they abandoned completely the bottom lane and the Darkseer is just going to jungle until level 5 and then he's going to come bottom lane. So Luo here looking for the first level kill and Tidehunter here is going to have a very hard time in the mid lane. So he was probably thinking that uh, Chan would be alone and uh, Tidehunter against Chaos Knight one on one would actually be quite valuable but uh, he sees that Lina is staying in the middle lane instead of uh, helping GG top lane. So yes, he's already swapping with Wuyan right now, and he's going to go for the top lane. And the bear is actually pulling the creeps. And Wuyan, what is he doing? He's actually running into the creeps, and he's going to get stunned by the Chaos Knight, full up stunned by the Lina, and he's going to go down, giving the first blood. Probably looking at his bear top, at you know, microing his bear top. He wasn't paying attention. So he clicked too far. That is a very big mistake. Or this, either he was just you know. Really caught up with his bear, or maybe he it was lag, but uh, it's it's one of these very big mistakes giving up the first blood meta lane for almost no reason here. So let's see how it's gonna go for Brewmaster against the Tidehunter top. So again, also Brewmaster Tidehunter, or maybe Tidehunter actually expected Brewmaster to go solo mid, which is actually quite common. The Brewmaster would rush a fast uh, bo uh, fast bottle and then farm up uh, just by staying here and using his clap. And he's going to go one on one on Titan. Titan is 540, 341 for the Brewmaster. Well, Lone Druid 340, and now we see Shadow Shaman coming up in the mid lane to help him. And uh, Drone Druid is even going to go for the little neutrals here because he knows that he cannot just go up to here. If he actually goes that far, uh, Chaos Knight just has to land a Reality Rift, and um, they're just going to, you know, uh, stun um, with the Chaos Bolt and follow up with the Lina. Lina going to go for the top lane and trying to get a little stun on the Tidehunter, but Tidehunter very wisely backing off. And uh, bottom lane, we have uh, SSSS free farming right now, sitting at 10 for 0, while the Sand King is still standing around to pull the creeps, keeping that lane control and uh, you know getting some experience. So Lone Druid here has to be very careful, using his bear around to not do much. He still has 8 creep kills. Oh yeah, his camps are the little camp, so no, it's not actually 8 creeps like uh, these ones. Urshaker here on the high ground, perhaps looking for a kill. We're gonna look at it. So the bear right now is trying to take the last hits. And... Urshaker very patient here, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, Wuyan is actually going... And he's gonna get uh, Reality Rift stunned once, but the Fisher on the wrong side! And Chaos Knight is gonna take the fall getting focused down by the tower so a little bit too eager here um, I do not know if they actually managed to spot the Shadow Shaman before I do not think he re I, I don't know if he actually revealed himself 
so they went on the laundry, but a very good shackle from the Shadow Shaman preventing the... Oh, very good, also blocked by the Earthshaker, blocking the Tide Hunter here in place, and Tide Hunter running away, but uh, is, it, is it gonna be enough? Uh, he has a he has a clap now. He and he's not using it. So GG gonna run up with very low health. Oh sorry, Shadow Shaman actually picking a cup to uh, kill middle lane while Chaos Chaos Knight killed the lone druid. So that's that's very uh, that's that's a like wasted kill top lane. Not using the clap as soon as he could, and we'll frag here with the Sand King sitting at level five and three, and let's look at the graph very quickly. So Dyer has a little advantage over the experience and the goal, but it's nothing serious, far from the goal only. And now we see the Darks here coming up bottom lane with a level 4 and a bottle. So he's gonna be just fine. La uh, ruin control, of course, by the Chaos Knight. The middle lane is not going so well for Invasion Red. And um, GG has actually a very weird visual bug. He has no he has no uh, you know weapon here. So, oh, going on the lone raid again, but uh, only one second stun, so Lina couldn't follow it. And uh, Chaos not using his uh, regeneration rune, so he's gonna be fine again. Darks here, here, sitting at level 5. Really, he's quite okay now. He has 777 health. Quite a lucky number. And uh, he's looking for farming, but uh, Sand King is actually going in very, very in. And he's, they're gonna, they're gonna dive on him, but... Uh, Darks here, very tanky, and uh, he actually is gonna kill the Lothrak there. So, very bad move made from Invasion Red. Uh, very, very, uh, you know, aggressive here, but uh, as I said, Darks here, way too tanky to do this at level 3 and 5. He he could, he just tanked all the damage from the Lothrak and the Sand King, and all the creeps went down, and uh, Lothrak was basically getting uh, harassed, uh, focused down by the tower afterwards. And uh, FNTY just had to run. Uh, next to the Lithrak and pick up the kill with the level 3 Iron Shell. So now level 4 Iron Shell. So let's look very quickly at the number of last hits. So Shen GG 5 for 1, but he's supporting uh, Invasion uh, SSSS 28 for 8. And uh, Earthshaker actually look here looking again to get a kill. So he's sitting in very, very patiently. Nothing's gonna happen top. And he's still standing here. He's sitting here. Oh, and the Shadow Shaman being way too... Oh, uh, he's going way too far, and he's just gonna die from the chain, st uh, chain stun. He was going to look for the the rune here. But uh, a bit risky. He has no war to watch the movement from the Earthshaker top lane, so... This is spelling his demise, and they're probably going to look at the Tide Hunter. Both the Earthshaker and the Chaos Knight are going towards the Tide Hunter. And Tide Hunter in a very bad spot right now. Luo, is he gonna get the block? He's getting the block on the Tide Hunter. Very good block. And GG is gonna go on him, but the uh, Chaos Knight actually pulling the Tide Hunter on the other side of the the Fisher, blocking their his own ally here. And Tide Hunter, is he gonna get away? He has very low health, but uh, oh, is he gonna get away? No, Fisher from long range, and Lina taking a double kill mid lane. We meanwhile on the actually taking a double kill on both the Lone Druid and the Sand King. I wonder what happened here. Lina sitting with very low health on mana. Top tower so maybe top. maybe they tried to tower dive her and uh, the tower did the, all the damage. And she did not even use Laguna Blade right here, so it was not getting a, a kill with this very high burst damage, only the sun and the dragon soul. So very curious here to know how it happened. So now Chan in the middle lane again, looking to farm some more. Cancelling his animation. <laughs> Do not know why he's doing this. And 28 for 8 now, and 2 kills for 1 and 2 assists, so he's sitting pretty well. So let's see, 17 for 2 only for the Lone Druid, 20 for 0 for the Tide Hunter. FNTY 41 for 0, and uh, this is enormous. Oh, trying to go on the Lashrak. Actually, TP server is going to come in, Laguna Blade lands. And uh, Shen GG gonna stand the F FNTY here and uh, stun going to land on the track. The track almost dead, but oh no, the last little last little dot of the double edict actually killed the darks here before his uh, iron shell could do the damage. And uh, Shadow Shaman even coming in to make sure that Lina doesn't get away. So this double edict, man, the the last little explosion actually killing the darks here before darks here could kill him. And um, top lane, we're gonna see F uh, MY going down to 
there's little brulings here. So tornado, uh, cyclone into uh, dis dispel magic to put him down again, and then stunning him again with the earth panda. Mid lane, what's gonna happen? Mid lane, nothing gonna happen. Chaos Knight getting entangled, so he cannot go on the uh, on the lone droid. Lone droid only level five, and uh, Chaos Knight already sitting on level seven. Uh, Earthshaker dewarding his um, his uh, most perf his preferred spot, his best spot. He he loves sitting around here, so he's putting a sentry ward and taking down the radiant ward that actually was watching his movement here. He wants to keep his little spot here, and uh, you know, lone druid farming as well as he can with his his bear, not putting himself at risk here. And bottom lane, the FNTY is still standing very far away from the lane, being very careful. Chan now with the Chaos Knight uh, Power Tread bottle as well as Bracer and Magic One, so plus 17 health, uh, plus 17 strength, so he's quite tanky. So smoke gain coming from the Lina and the Earthshaker. Are they gonna catch anyone? And what was that? Okay. And Luo actually seeing the Lashrak, but not gonna go on him. Maybe they're a bit afraid that uh, others might be here. They do not see. Actually, they. Oh, so Shadow Shaman going on GG, GG, with, without his ultimate and his ward trap, so he's gonna go down now. He has to hit the ward three times before he actually kills it, and he kills it, but he cannot just get away. And bottom lane, we're gonna see, you no, know, Luo actually getting spotted by the bear here. So, the bear actually sees everything, Chaos not coming in, Luo coming in, and they're, done, they're gonna go on the bear, uh, are they gonna kill it? Probably... Yes, they're putting a lot of spells to kill this bear, and you know they're they're not even gonna finish the bear. So FNT1 having a little bit of a fish here, trying to find an enemy hero. Oh. But um, it's gonna be a trade, top lane, uh, top tower for bottom tower, and um, TB support coming up top. Only Lina here, so may not defend the tower alone. The bottom tower going up, going down first, not last hit by the. Um, Chaos Knight, so more gore for the entire team. TV support coming up top. Lina coming on from behind. And Sand King not doing anything. Shadow Shaman gonna get burst down instantly, but uh, Sand King ultimate, Tidehunter ultimate, and Lina's gonna go down, but GG, GG, having a lot of health. And F F FZ, FZ running away, teleporting again. And GG's gonna get a lucky crit here. I uh, thought the Tidehunter would actually get away, but no. And uh, Lashrak going on the Chaos Knight here, middle lane, and uh, and he's gonna get him. So Lone Druid ended up dying here, but uh, in exchange, the Lashrak got a kill on the enemy Chaos Knight carry. And they're gonna go for the top lane now. The top tower is probably gonna go down with the Urshi uh, the uh, Brewmaster. He lands a one clap, and all the creeps go down. And TP support coming in in the form of Shadow Shaman. So he's gonna go in and TP support. He's gonna go and land the hex right now. Brewmaster, oh, very good ultimate. He's actually gonna get away with this. And is Shadow Shaman gonna go down? No. Tower not denied. And um, Brewmaster actually now backing off with his little brulings. I wonder why he backs with all his bruling. Yeah, he only needs to back off the Earth bruling. The the um, Brewmaster actually gets back to life on the. Oh, so he gets the blink dagger now and. Very good blink, not getting caught up behind. Uh, I was saying the basically the uh, the ultimate when it ends, if the Earth uh, Panda is still alive, uh, Brewmaster is going to form up on the Earth Panda. If the Earth Panda is dead, it's going to go on the Air Panda, and if the Air Panda is dead, it's going to go on the Fire Panda. So now they are looking for the top lane, and top tower is almost dead. I doubt GG can do anything about this, he has no ultimate now. And they're going to go and kill the tower instantly with Diabolic Edict. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Lone Druid gonna go down, one stun, and Lina's follow up with the Dragon Salve and the Light Strike Array, and um, Lone Druid very squishy, so not much of an effort to bring him down, he didn't even have the time to move. So Lone Druid getting shut down really hard, and what is hitting? 145 right now. So it, it looks like the first, it, it starts to look like the first game where he played the where he played the the prophet sitting was like zero five at the end of the laning phase. It's same for his uh, lone druid. So the tower is gonna go down. Uh, Lishrak, uh, you know, double edict plus the serpent wars. Way enough damage to get this uh, tower down. And um, invasion red not gonna be uh, very aggressive here. They took the tower. They took whatever they came for. 
they know that they cannot really push the tower, this tower yet, so they're not going to go, and they're going to back off. So let's see what the items look like right now. We have... Uh, okay, so we have... Uh, we have the Sand King with the Urn of Shadow and some Ward, the Boots. Lone Druid only sitting with Boots, and how much gold does he have? Lone Druid, where are you? Here. 2k gold, so it's okay. But he's still uh, halfway for, uh, halfway far from his uh, Radiance. Uh, I mean, at least Sacred Relic, not even Radiance, so it's actually quite bad right now. And also, Smoke by the Radiance side. And they're gonna find, uh, they're gonna find the Lina plus the Chaos Knight, but uh, they're gonna ignore the... Chaos Knight, and just, uh, they're just gonna go on the Lina, making sure they get one kill instead of uh, running after two, running after two ki different kills, and maybe not getting any. Tidehunter having this cloak, looking for his pipe, but uh, very far away from the pipe. Lashrak, Lashrak has more farm right now. Arcane boots, Argo club sitting with uh, 1.3k gold, so probably go going to go for this BKB to avoid getting a uh, chain disabled, so he can stay around and uh, deal this magical damage. And uh, Arcane Boots now also on Shadow Shaman, so more spam ability coming for the Radiant. What's the dark side looking? GG having his Bling Dagger and his Point Booster, probably looking for a fast Agony Scepter. Lu also with the Arcane Boots, so he's farming quite okay. And uh, Darks are actually going to go on the Lashrak, and and uh, the, the Brewmaster actually wa uh, missing his uh, stomp here. Uh, Shen GG gonna land an ultimate, but not on anyone. And a very good uh, Earthshaker ultimate going to kill on the uh, Lashrak. Uh, buyback coming up from everyone, and, <laughs> and Sand King is also going to die. So two buybacks coming up for the Radiant. We have uh, Lashrak that just bought back, and I think it was Shadow Shaman. Yes, Shadow Shaman actually bought back as well. Very, very weird buybacks there. Uh, they cannot really capitalize on anything right now with these buybacks. So it seems like a waste of money to me. So very weird here, we saw that uh, GG actually not blinking in to land his uh, th Thunderclap and uh, he actually missed the Thunderclap because FNTY pulled the enemy far away from him. So I do not know if it's miscommunication or uh, hotkey not working well, it, it happens sometimes. Uh, it, it, it's more uh, visible when we have a, uh, I forgot who, uh, who it was, who was playing the Slaughter and uh, you know instead of blinking and then, and then uh, crushing, he would crush and then blink in. And that that's some very weird bug that I often see uh, post on the the, the dev uh, website or even the the red the Deodoro to Reddit. So I do not know if it's just misclick or is, if it's actual bug. And um, the Radiant actually having a Sentry Ward here, but the the Earthshaker cannot spot it. Or even if he uh, actually he can spot it with this ward, but he's a melee hero, so he cannot really attack it. Now uh, we have uh, Invasion sitting very carefully in their own jungle, not wanting to cross this river. It's actually very dangerous right now. It's uh, 9 for 14, so not that big of an adventure skill-wise, but uh, uh, you know, gold and experience-wise, 5k XP in the adventure of the Radiant of the Dire. Only 1.5k gold in the adventure to the Dire, so not that much of an adventure. But still, two towers down, three towers down for the Radiant and. And also three towers down for the no, actually only two towers down for the dire side. So ward elite not having that much of a lead, I thought they would. The experience shows the uh, the little, uh, you know the the fact that the lanes were rather won by ward elites, and they're going to go for another smoke, trying to probably catch the lone druid. And lone druid's bear not going to see the ward elite guys. Uh, Lone Druid, uh, the, the bear is not a hero, so it doesn't reveal the um, the smoked unit. It used to because it was a bug, but it got fixed a few months ago. And Earthshaker putting down this very aggressive ward to see if anyone's trying to farm. And uh, you know, uh, Lone Druid being very careful here. He's not, he's not, uh, you know, he's not really putting himself forward. He's very, very laid back behind his tower. And the dire side is actually staying around here in the bottom lane, so. They probably want to wait for the Lone Druid to come out, but the Lone Druid's not going to come out. And meanwhile, we have uh, the Radiant doing the th same thing middle lane. They are watching the Chaos Knight and waiting for the Chaos Knight to make a wrong move, using the Lashrak as a bait. But similar to Lone Druid, Chaos Knight not going to take the bait, being very careful. And uh, <laughs> and World Elite is actually munching their way through the trees by using the, the Lina Light Strike Array. And they're really wanting this kill, and they're not gonna find it. The Lone Druid is just farming up in the jungle, and now 
now they have to back off if they want to save this middle lane tower. But uh, nope, doesn't look like they want to go for it. So the the uh, glyph is gonna get popped to waste a bit of the Lefrak double edit, but uh, the war is still dealing too much damage. And uh, right now Lina is still showing herself, but um, wasted a lot of time bottom lane here, uh, doing nothing, hiding in the trees. And now the Radiants are going to come back. Are they going to be able to find a straggler? Maybe Shen GG is going to get caught. Nope. And top lane is uh, actually the Darks here against the... So, oh, he's going to catch two of them. Shadow Shaman and Sand King. But he's... Oh, very good Fisher. Uh, Shadow Shaman with his uh, very low health. Shen GG using his ultimate, but not going to touch anyone with it. And uh, now Brewmaster on the run. He has this clap, he has the ultimate, and he's gonna go for Lushrak, is he gonna get him? Yes, Urshik is actually staying around, and uh, Little Fisher here to get the Lushrak, uh, Lushrak actually wasting the Airshaker uh, ultimate to actually get the Little Shrek because he wa he avoided the Lina Dragon Soul, and now they're going to back off, they don't have anything left. Shen King not having a dagger, so he won't be able to catch them. Luo sitting with 1.3k gold, so almost to his uh, like 700 gold away from his dagger and chaos knight almost up to his bkb or to his Senj if he wants to go for Senj like we saw in the first game but i doubt it uh brewmaster now with the uh, 1k gold what's he's gonna go for so we see darks here not going for the so i think i think he had a, a um he had a, a stout shield so he's not gonna go for the the Vanguard, he's not going to finish his Vanguard, he, instead he's going to go for the Cloak, so probably going to look at the Fast Pipe again. Well, I say Fast Pipe, but it's like 20 minutes in and he's nowhere near the pipe. And Earthshaker farming up, trying to get his uh, Dagger. Lina still having the support items, Magic Wand, Bracer, Arcane Boots and Wards. FNTY, no, oh, I just watched FNTY. Chaos Knight almost with his BKB, only 200 gold away. And Brewmaster not going to go for the fast Aghanim Scepter, instead going to look at the Medal of Courage. So Medal of Courage giving some more armor. Uh, good against the... So bottom tower is going to go down. I was saying the Medal of Courage uh, very often used against uh, the Lone Druid in the competitive games to bring down this bear. The bear has 2.7k HP, so it's a lot. But it only has 6 armor, so if you can reduce it by with, with use your Medal of Courage, he actually goes down quite fast with the uh, auto attacks. So nothing really happening here. Compared to the last game, this is very uneventful. They are playing very safely. Invasion Red not wanting to make the same mistake that the last game, which was really, uh, you know, they... If they see the war lead side coming to fight, they, they go for it and they try to answer. And they were not in no position to take those fights, so they died once, twice, and three team wipes in a row that really you know sealed the, the game away for, from their grasp. So, you know, losing one team fight is already disastrous, but losing three in a row in like five or ten minutes, uh, under five or ten minutes window, it, it's, it's just devastating. You really rarely can go, uh, you know, up from here. So a little ward here, looking at the high ground to make sure if you're farming here and you not get that, you know, caught up by uh, anyone that is sitting on the high ground. But now the brewmaster with the blink dagger from quite a time already, he can uh, engage from very far away. And uh, Chaos Knight completed his BKB. Now probably looking to finish his drums. FNTY now, he has his, uh, I forgot the name of the item, it's... Uh, it's, 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 it's here. Oh, Hood of Defiance. He, he actually has a full Hood of Defiance. And uh, almost, I think, 1k gold away from the um, pipe. And Wordle is going to go for the Roshan. FNTY is still pushing up the mid lane. And do the Radiant see this? The Radiant, they have a ward here, so they probably know. Oh, actually, no, they smoked in, so maybe they don't. And uh, GG not using his Medal of course. This is very strange. Medal of Courage also very useful to take down Roshan, you see he only have 5 armor, so Medal of Courage putting down to minus 1. And GG, I do not know what he's waiting for to use this Medal of Courage. Now the Radiant Sider is going to come in, and they're taking a lot of time, and now he's using it. But uh, too late, too late, the Tidehunter is going to come in, and very good Fisher Block, denying the uh, Tidehunter, he cannot go in. And um, Storm using his ultimate, the wall has already been used. 
And what what is Chen doing? Chen is going very aggressive here. He's gonna go in, and he's going in. He's going in, but uh, a very good ultimate from the uh, Sand King and the Titan is gonna pick up the the support just instantly. And uh, Lina is gonna go down. Chaos Knight is gonna go down as well. No, no, he's still alive. And oh, the poor Earthshaker here died from the Radiance burn. Now bear with the Radiance. FNTY running away, and Chan running away as well. So very aggressive move from the Chaos Knight. You know, he knows he has the BKB, he has the Aegis, he can go in, but the problem is, with this amount of AoE, if he goes in, his supports, and oh, the Brewmaster also going down, so 3 for 1 now, uh, 3 for 1, I think, yeah, 3 for 1, and uh, I was saying, basically, Chaos Knight, if you have a BKB and Aegis, you can go in, the problem is, with this amount of AoE coming from Sen King and coming from the Tidehunter, your support are gonna take a fall if you do this, because if they want to support you, they will have to follow you, and if they follow you, well, Tidehunter Ultimate has a really big AoE, so they're gonna get caught up. You can bet on this. And now Alondrid with his, uh, you know, Radiance on the bear. Going to be also very, very aggressive. Blink in, and a Surge to catch a Straggler, but uh, nope. Not gonna catch anyone, and the bear just being a total pain in the ass. Trying to deal damage to everyone, but uh, he's gonna get resummoned, so no goal for you guys. And uh, so now we see Urshaker Blink Dagger, I was, as I was saying. Darks here not gonna go for the pipe and he's gonna go for an auger club. So he's being very indecisive here, going for one vitality booster, then one cloak, then one auger club, basically starting all three items. So Ogre Club I guess it's for the BKB as well. Maybe he's seeing that uh, he really needs to stay around and uh, you know as I said if you're gonna go in even if your Chaos Knight has the BKB, your support or all the other he LA heroes that are around will take the AoE damage in the face. So they're probably going to look for a BKB as well. Chan popping up the very, very early ultimates, probably looking for the middle tower. But uh, right now his ultimate sitting and doing nothing. And Treasure Shaman, Treasure Shaman, uh, blink from GG. Very good, uh, very good little hex here. GG still not in the ultimate form. And Shadow Shaman going down. Shadow Shaman going down. FNTY taking a lot of damage from the Lushrak. Lushrak with the BKB, and he's not going to take it. The shadow, the darks here running away pretty fast with his little surge here. So only the shadow shaman going down in this fight, and Gigi gonna TP out of this. Luo also on the run. Shen gonna blink in, trying to get him, but oof. If he actually tried to TP here, he might have gotten caught off. But uh, very good decision. He decides to blink instead. So this fight actually looking uh, going well for the world elite side. I. I thought the uh, they would take uh, some casualty on their side, seeing how the seeing how the the uh, the uh, Shadow Shaman actually managed to put down the wards, but no ultimates from the Titan. It was on cooldown. Uh, I think uh, yeah, I think the Brewmaster when he jumped in, he has no ultimate either. So since both of the both side didn't have a lot of uh, ultimate ready, a bear's gonna go down. And this is uh, how long without a bear? Oh, he's gonna resummon it right now. So Shadow Shaman here sitting in the smoke, but uh, not doing anything, just uh, staying around, trying to see if anyone's gonna go for them. And how are the gold graph and the XP graph going? 5k experience in the adventures of the Radi the Dire, and almost zero in the gold graph, so pretty much even at that stage of the game. Four towers, fifth, five towers down for the Dire side, and only two again for the Radiant. So, tied under now with the Gem of True Sight. No more smoke shenanigan, no more uh, warding here. And he has the pipe, so he's looking very great for the, the next team fight. Shadow Shaman still with his support build. Oh, very good, very good vacuum, and a very <laughs> a little chicken that is uh, going very fast, and uh, poor Shadow Shaman's left behind. Now, Dark's here with his uh, BKB as well. Are they gonna catch someone? They're going to go for the Tide Hunter. Tide Hunter sent up in the air. And he's gonna get stunned by the Earth Panda. And Chaos Knight's gonna stun, uh, follow up with another stun, and he's gonna go down. The gem is gonna go down, and uh, the Dire will be able to pick that up. So, Brewmaster now with the. Oh, the bear actually getting caught up behind, and this is how long without the bear? 44 seconds. So, 44 seconds where the Lone Druid sits naked with Busa Speed and two Ironwood Branch. Zero DPS coming out from the Lone Druid without his bear, without this Radiance. Very risky move here, and. Um, World lead look uh, in a good shape to actually take the bottom tower now, so taking two kills. Probably gonna transition this into a push. 
But uh, Brewmaster ultimate down and Chaos Knight ultimate still up. So Dark Seer ultimate also down. And let's see on the other side. Sand King has Epicenter up. Uh, Shadow Shaman has his wars up. And Lone Druid is away farming up. So they might look to do something, but uh, just the ward popping down to try to defend this tower a bit, but uh, placed a bit too far. They can actually still attack the tower. He was pretty concerned about going in. And uh, blink in by the uh, Sand King, but two BKB popping off. This, the Sand King ultimate dealing absolutely no damage. Tidehunter only catching the Lina in his ultimate. And uh, now they're going to start and run away. Uh, Chaos Knight going on the Lone Druid. The Lone Druid taking a ton of damage, going down as well. The GG getting a uh, follow up by the F, uh, by um, Tidehunter, but he's not gonna die. He's gonna get saved here by his Earthshaker ally and the rest of his, the, uh, the rest of the cavalry. Five for zero here for the this team fight and Invasion Red now looking in, really really in trouble because they're probably going to go and take this tower and maybe even Arax. Only uh, 14 seconds until the Sand King goes up, and Sand King alone cannot do anything, so he'll have to wait for the other allies to come in. Approximately 25 seconds before they can do anything. Chan is actually taking the damage, but uh, no matter. He's using um, a, a chart of Drum of Endurance to get this tower down faster. And now they're looking very low on health, so they have to be careful. They have to take this Rax very quickly. If they get caught up, it might look very, very bad for World Elite. And Sand King is actually blinking in, stunning three, but not gonna fall, not getting any fall up by the Shadow Shaman. And uh, oh, Sand King and the uh, Darks here caught up by hand, behind by the vacuum, but um, they're all low on health and they might have it overextended here. Chaos Knight gonna go back with full health, but uh, oh, every, every, uh, oh, uh, uh, Panda ultimate actually up again, so they're gonna turn this around. And Panda, Panda with very low health and still not backing up with his Earth Panda, so. He's gonna be very, very uh, in a very bad spot right now. He has very low health and vacuum. Sh uh, very good um, timing on the very good timing on the uh, of, uh, the mechanism here. He's gonna save the brewmaster. Brewmaster not gonna die from the shock. Very good blink away. And the shadow shaman is actually going to die because of this being too greedy, trying to snipe the brewmaster. I don't know if you realize here, but the uh, Lina timing on the mechanism was perfect. The Brewmaster would have gone to the first Aether Shock, but uh, Lina actually uh, used the mechanism just before the Aether Shock was used. So Brewmaster actually surviving this fight and even getting a kill on the Shadow Shaman because Shadow Shaman actually tried to finish the uh, Brewmaster here. So one Rax down and the Gold Graph and the Experience Graph is going to pummel down from 5k advantage to f over... That's, that's like 20k now. It's 15k over the last 10 minutes, and Goldgraph same 10k over the last 10 minutes. So see, that's the kind of mistake I was talking about. Basically, losing a uh, losing uh, like losing um, some heroes here, like two heroes, then losing an entire team fight here bottom, then losing this uh, tower plus the racks, and then losing again two heroes, the uh, Dark, the Sand King and the uh, Shadow Shaman. So nine heroes going down for their side over uh, under like something like six or seven eight minutes and um, they're now going to go for the brute force push lay push middle and this is very very risky the the bear is actually pushing down the bell lane he's gonna be able to bring him back but um, there's very very little chance that they can do anything the dark shear uh, ultimate is up and uh, considering they're already at disadvantage here I do not see how they can actually brute force in with the dark shear with his ultimate a panda not having his ultimate, but soon having it. And um, Lina now with 4 staff and mechanism, so a lot of mobility coming up for these heroes. Earthshaker also with the bling dagger, and now looking for either. Oh, so smoking up. They're gonna go look for someone. Are they gonna catch anyone? Doesn't look like it. They are going to go and try to find a straggler. Chaos Knight sitting here with the Reaver, so probably looking for this uh, Heart of Tarask to tank even more. And stay in the fight. Brewmaster completed his Aghanim Scepter, so his ultimate is going to be even more powerful right now. Uh, Darks here going for this uh, Shiva, and still not doing anything with the Vitality in the Cloak, but uh, it's okay. I guess uh, Cloak is just to avoid taking too much damage in the early game from the spells, and the Vitality Booster just giving up this extra health to avoid. Is also going down in the team fight. And Earthshaker, what is Earthshaker sitting with? He has this uh, Orgle Club. He 
Ida wants to go for the Aghanim, but I doubt it. Maybe he's going to go also for the uh, the BKB, and that's going to be three BKB up for the Radiant, uh, the Dire side, and three BKB up. You can bet that the the uh, Dire are just going to be the Radiant are just going to be uh, using their ultimate in nothing. Panda is just going to use his ultimate, so the the, um, the epicenter and the uh, ravage is going to mean very little to him. And with the uh, Chaos Knight, the Darkseer, and the Earthshaker with the BKB, only Lina actually risks to take a fall. And Lina even has this four staff, so she, she can four staff herself away if she sees that uh, the tide is actually coming in. So a little smoke here coming up from the Radiant. They are trying to pick up someone. And maybe they're, they're going to get one. Uh, they are actually going on the Roshan. And um, still not using the medallion. And oh, Lina's gonna get caught up by behind, and she sees this. She's uh, pushing herself herself away. Are they gonna be able to catch someone? No, the strike actually going in, and everyone's going in. Tide hunter ultimate, but uh, the panda already used the ultimate, so they're gonna get the uh, shadow shaman. They're gonna get the laundry. They're gonna get the tide hunter. And Sand King actually coming now, but uh, too late. Everyone's already dead on his side, and he's gonna die as well. Uh, again a team wipe, again, 5-4-0, or 0 4 five, and uh, they're gonna go and put the mid lane now. Again a w team wipe. I do not know what went very wrong here, it was really too fast for me to understand what happened. The Titan used ultimate, everyone popped the BKB and went in, and the Lashrak deal a lot of damage, but the uh, Panda used his ultimate as soon as the team fire started, so he, got, he, got not, uh, he did not get caught up by the, the uh, Titan ultimate, and Sen King coming way too late. He was probably waiting for the BKB to, to uh, you know, be uh, dispelled, and probably they're going to. Okay, so they're not going to push the matter. Maybe they're still going to go for the Roshan. Let's see if that's the case. They have wards here, so they know if uh, the enemies are actually going to try and stop them. They're going to go for the Roshan now. So now using the uh, medallion as soon as uh, the the fight starts. I'm still unsure of why he didn't do that the first time. And um, game is gonna crash. Sorry about this. Um, I'm gonna put up part two in a moment. I'm sorry about this. Uh, apparently, when I use XSplit and uh, Dota 2, it crash every so often. So I'll upload part two in a short moment. Thanks for watching, and see you guys soon.